visits. Uh. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we're we're gonna do a very interesting video today. Uh, we're gonna take a look at my student Valentina's game from the Turkey Bowl this past weekend. Yeah, and uh, I I think it's gonna be very very instructive for everybody. Like between the ratings of twelve hundred. And all the way up to at least 2,000, any 1,400, 15, 16, 17 will benefit a lot from that. Because the mistakes made in these games are very, very typical mistakes that I see. Like anytime I see games of 1,500, 1,600, 1,700s, those are exactly the kinds of mistakes I see being made over and over and over again. So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to uh, start looking at the game. Valentina is uh, around 1,500, uh, her rating. She was 1,550 going into the tournament, lost a little bit, uh, didn't have the best performance, but it's okay. Uh, and uh, her opponent was a talented young kid named Nicholas Barron, and he was rated, what, about like 1,730, right? Yeah, 1730. yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. And so the opening, there's not much to say. It was a standard Nidor, which we actually happened to look at right before the tournament. So, uh, and H3, this is a line I like a lot. This is a line I play myself. It's a flexible system. The point is, you want to expand potentially with G4, Bishop G2, castle and see what black does it's a very flexible system but we're not going to talk too much about the opening let's see um e5 is uh one of the main ways for black to play it e6 is another popular move which actually i had uh i had during my game um remember the crazy game i had at the turkey bowl with the rio where like he was attacking me like crazy the one oh, you no. were watching yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, him, so him. that was also a Nidor. That was the same opening, except he mm -hmm. played e6 instead of e5, which oh. is also, they're about equally popular, e6 and e5. But e5 um, is very standard. Okay, knight d2, e2, correct move. Uh, and yeah, b5. So we had never looked at that move, right? No. Uh, and uh, it is, it's a way of playing it. B5 is a typical idea for black in this line. He wants to just go bishop B7 and exp also B5. He's expanding on the queen side, potentially B4 at the right moment. So it makes sense. Uh, so here you played absolutely the correct move, G4. And let me ask you this. Were you worried at all about him playing B4? and then taking on e4 where you calculating this because he could win a pawn here you see that he could play b4 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw. uh and uh tell me like what what did you think during the game about that uh were you at all worried not, about that yeah i mean i looked at it it's not like i wasn't worried about it i looked yeah. at it and then i thought that my thinking was really flawed, but I mean, I thought that I had already, def um, if he did that, I would, um, I would go knight d5, mm -hmm. and it would be a perfect, like, outpost for my knight, so if he did take the pawn, then I felt like maybe, I, that, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this one, because yeah. I was trying, having trouble for it, right? okay. but then I would go, like, um, bishop g2, and then, you know, once he moves his knight, now there's potential, like, discoveries, Absolutely, like, yeah. Check. Absolutely right. So it was really bad. For me. Exactly, bad. exactly. So like taking would be this whole line would be very bad for Black because knight yeah. b five, knight takes c four, bishop g two, and it's just too much. That's just too much pressure for the pawn. That would be disastrous for Black. So you are absolutely right to not be worried about that. And g four yeah. is the correct move. Let's move on. Um, so g4, bishop b7, normal, bishop g2, and he goes b4. Okay, so now you're already, uh, he can't even take on e4, and you make the absolutely correct move, knight d5, makes perfect sense. And now, like, he, 
pretty much has to take that knight because your knight is awfully strong yeah. in d5. So he takes it as expected. And this is a common structure, a very common structure that arises in the knight door. In fact, in the book, you're going to find like there's a chapter on this exact structure. So like pawns for black are on d6 and e5 and your pawn has a pawn on d5. It's a very rich structure. There's plans for both sides. What do you think, like, your... Tell the book. The book. Huh? You just said the book. I don't think... Yeah, so know what, what do you think, like, your main, white's main idea is here? Like, the main break for white later? Like, not maybe not right away, but, like, generally speaking. The break, okay. Um... Well, I know, I know, I know. Wait, I don't know. Well, you when we went over, I remember you telling me we have to castle king side and mm -hmm. then play f4. So yeah, of that. course, f4. F4 is like White's main idea here, because when yeah. we play f4, we're gonna undermine the center, and yeah. right away, like it causes him problems. He has to either give up the center and activate your pieces, or if he doesn't take, now you have options. You could either take, and then you know weaken his structure here, or play f5, and. Um, take over some space so um yeah of course f4 so anyways let's see what happened here he went bishop e7 you castle and here right here is the first interesting moment of the game this is where it gets uh very instructive right here he goes in this position bishop g5 what do you think about this move about this move bishop g5 okay i want to be like what did you think during the game during the game i thought the first thing I thought, and I don't know if it's right now, I thought that he wasted a move because he already developed his... Wait, no, hold on. His bishop was in F F8. Never mind. Um, I thought, at first, I didn't... I considered, like, look. I looked, like, briefly at taking it. Okay. But I didn't like it. Why? I don't know. Because... Well, actually, I did consider taking it, and it was like, maybe it's good because he wasted two tempos getting his bishop out, and then I'm wasting only one, you know, taking right. it. Exactly. And Just take, from a general take. point of view, it makes perfect sense to take it. Although it does activate the queen, but yeah. the queen is all alone in your territory. So uh, here's the thing. Experienced players, they... Uh, like the difference, one of the difference between lower rated players and higher rated players, a higher rated player would look at a position like this and they would see that um, something has to be wrong with what black is doing because the king is still in the middle. The yeah. knight is on b8. He's not, he's not developing. And now he's moving the same piece twice. Yeah. And like uh, for a strong player, Right away, like alarm bells would go off. He would like right away. He would tr like ask the question, "How could I punish this? How could I punish this? Because something seems off." Right away, you see this move, Bishop G5, and now here's the very instructive moment about this. The center is the center closed or open right now? In terms of pawn, it's closed, yeah. right? It's closed. It's closed. Yeah. You're right. At the moment, it's closed, which means usually under normal circumstances, when the center is closed, you could actually get away with moves like these. Bishop g5, like it's it's like an interesting positional move because the bishop is like that, technically speaking. Right. So he's trying to trade it. So it makes sense. Right. But here's the key in this position. The center is closed at the moment, but it has potential to be open only in one way. How could it be open? There's only one way. For black to open or for, for white? white to open? Obviously, black doesn't want to open. Yeah, at four. Of course. If not at four, then bishop, a move like bishop g5 would perfectly be justified. But because of that possibility of opening things up with the king still being in the center, this move is absolutely anti-positional, only because you have that f4 move available. And right away, right away, the first move I would calculate, I would only calculate two things. 
I would either calculate playing f4 right away or taking first and then playing f4, which is with a tempo. And actually, I like both. And I checked it with the engine, and it indeed gives a big advantage for white on both, plus one. It's almost winning. Which, like, that was my intuition right away. I saw black. So an experienced player could, uh, they know what a person could get away with and what you cannot get away with. And this already, it feels too much. First of all, there's other factors here. This B4 pawn, it's out there. It's all alone in your territory. Plus the fact that you have a pawn on d5, so you have a space advantage. The fact that his knight is not developed. The fact that his king is in the center. All those factors combined make me think that what black cannot get away with this kind of move like bishop g5. And right away, I would start like looking at this move f4. So for example, take, right? Bishop takes g5. Queen takes g5. Now you play this move f4. What does black do? What does black do after that? Let, let's actually play those moves on the board. So bishop takes g5. Give me one second. Yeah. Sorry, I'll be back. So for the people watching, so queen takes g5. F4 we play now. We're attacking the queen. He has to react to it. If he moves the queen, it's going to be disastrous because we're going to open things up with the king in the middle. We're just going to take an e5. That's very, very bad for black. Um, you see that, right? If After f4. He, he, he basically, after f4, he has to take an e5 almost. Because if he doesn't take an e5, let's say he moves his queen, you're going to take next move. And it's like, He's going to have to take with the pawn. And then like you're going to have this pass D pawn that's very dangerous. And the king is in the middle. The position just looks disastrous for black. So he almost has to take on F4. And now both moves are actually good. You could take with the knight. That's fine. But even better, I like taking with the rook. And now look at the issues that black has already. First of all, you're attacking this pawn on B4. Remember I said that was one of the factors of Black's like problematic position. The fact that this pawn is out there all alone without support of the pieces. And there you go. There you go. It's just hanging right now. And if he plays a move like a5 to protect it. Now, if anything, you have rookie 4 check. You just play rookie 4 check and his king has to move. And it's just awful. Like it's huge, huge advantage already for White. Like, look at your pieces, look at his and the king in the middle. Your queen now is going to head to d4, like the amazing square where it's going to shoot throughout the whole board. This way, plus queen b6. And this is just horrible, just absolutely horrible for black. You see that, right? Makes perfect sense. So, uh, again, the lesson here, when you see your opponent does something strange for like he's not castle his pieces are not developed and the position is either open or it has potential to be open it could be closed but it could be open then right away how do i punish it and usually the way to punish things is open things up when you're ahead in development so simple easily you come to this move f4 right Okay, good. Let's move on. Uh, well, I didn't. So yeah. So what you did instead, um, you played this move. Um, let uh, C three, I think it was. No, uh, you played C four, which C4. I mean, it's not like okay. the worst move ever. I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you what. Mm -hmm. Can I try, like explain it? Okay. So my thinking obviously was flawed, but I thought okay. So my my point with that move was that. His bishop, his white bishop, mm -hmm. I thought that it was kind of like, you know, blocked out of the diagonal. Right. Um, because of my b5 pawn. And my b5 pawn was, it was supported, obviously, yes. But I thought it'd be better if, like, I kept his bishop blocked out. I mean, because there's no way he could, like, retransfer because of my g4 pawn, too. 
Mm-hmm. So I thought that maybe if I went C4 and B3 and form like a strong chain, then that'd be good for me. Yes. And then uh, let, I, let, I totally get your thinking. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. But let me t- explain you what the flaw is in your thinking. In yeah. chess, you only have one move. You have only one turn and you want to make the most out of your turn. Sure, if you could have like three moves and you could do everything you want, sure, it's desirable to to make this chain. You want to do this. You would also love to like bring your king somewhere to h1. But you you don't have that luxury. Every move, you want to do the most you could do with that move. And c4 is definitely not the most you could do with this move. It's too soft, so to speak. It's the like the, this pawn does not this is like overkill your pawn is already protected twice it's like more than needed already and now you're trying to protect it a third time which is totally unnecessary in this position and sure uh that could be something you do if there's nothing better to do in this position let's say the position was completely locked now and there was no f4 now your strategy totally changes. You start looking for these kinds of things. But here, no, it's a different story. The po- pos- his king's still in the center. The position could still be open with f4. So you don't even look at moves like the c4 in this kind of situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Let's move on. So c4. Uh, so he takes, okay. And rook takes c1. And now... Yeah, uh, knight c5, and here's the problem. Now already, black is fine, because he's he already, he he's just in time. He has this knight, now he has this perfect outpost square on c5, and he could castle even if you play f4. Now his knight is, is protecting the e5 square. So he could just castle, and if you take, he's going to take knight takes e5, and he's going to have a monster knight there. So now f4 doesn't have the same kind of firepower as it did a move ago, right? Yeah. So uh, now I would say the position is close to equal. And if had you done that f4, it was close to winning already for white. So it's the, the, these kinds of things that make all the difference. Okay, queen d2. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Just improving the position of the queen. Plus, it's with a tempo attacking on d4. So, I like queen d2. Uh, a5. Knight g3, I like a lot also. Makes perfect sense. You're remaneuvering your knight to a better square either to f5 or to e4. That's a very natural move. And since f4 doesn't have much sting here, yeah, this is exactly the kind of move you want to improve your pieces. Very good move. Uh, let's see what happened next. I, I believe he castled, right? Yeah. Um, so. And again, this move. This move, awful, awful, awful. And let me say why. Now you, you could explain why. it's. Can you explain why this move is so bad? Based on my previous explanation. Because it's not making most out of the Exactly. It's too soft. It's too soft. It, it's not necessary. This B3 move, it's like overkill. It's just to make your position look uh, pleasing visually. Yeah, great. I have this pawn chain. But really, like this C4 pawn is in no needed protection. If anything, it does more harm than good. Because now later on, at the right moment, like let's say it's an end game, he's going to have this A4 break. And now he has something to latch onto and to get the file after that take and the rook will penetrate. So long term, it's it's a bad, it hurts your position actually. And it doesn't help one bit. Not to mention there's so much more useful things to do here. Knight e4, right away with a tempo centralizing the knight. Knight f5, those are energetic moves. Those moves have energy. You want your moves, if you want to be a strong player, you want all your moves to have energy in them, energy behind your moves. B3 has no energy. It's like a tree. It, it has no life, that move. Knight E4 has energy. F4 has energy. F4, it's, it's, it's a very playable move here. 
it has some drawbacks because now he could take, take, and then get this outpost on e5. I don't know. It needs to yeah. be evaluated. I'm not sure about it. But the point is, it does have energy. B3 has no energy. Let's move on. Um, so knight c5, of course, it, it makes sense. Uh, he went knight c5 to the outpost. Now you went knight e4. It's an okay move. But it's not nearly as effective as it would be last move. Because, for example, let's say you played knight c5, knight e4 last move before he played knight c5. Now when he plays knight c5, now you could take the knight and get a protected pass d pawn. I can't see your screen, but I mean, I can see it, but I can't uh, see the move. Yeah, sorry. So you see that? If you did it last move instead of b3, and he played knight c5 next, which he probably would do, because he had to protect the d6 pawn. Now you would just take that knight if it was your move. And then after he takes, you get this very strong protected pass pawn. Yeah, yeah. But now it's his move. That's the difference. And he takes this knight, which makes perfect sense, because it was centralized and, like, better than his knight. So big difference that those moves like B3, they, they uh, I see that all the time in lower rated players. All the time I see like 50, when uh, 1500, 16, even 17 make these kinds of moves because they see they see like games of Karpov, of Carlson and they see like he often does things like King H1, B3, A3. But that's um, that's the thing. It's about it takes experience to know the difference, to know when you could afford to make these quiet moves and when there's simply more important things to do on your agenda. So, um, okay, he takes. White is still a little better despite all that. I, I like white. Your bishop is nicely centralized. You have a space advantage. I definitely prefer white here despite all that. So let's see what happens. He played rook c8. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of this move because the rook is not doing anything at all on the c5. Yeah, that's what I... Maybe he wanted to stop you from playing c5 at the right moment. He wants to discourage it. So it does make some sense. Yeah, now that I look at it, I think that's why. Because if he didn't play rook c8, you could play c5 next. And after dc, rook takes c5. And your rook suddenly becomes very strong. Plus, you have this pass d pawn. So it does make some sense, his rook c8 move. Uh, let's see what you did next. Okay, queen d3, I like it. Queen d3 makes a lot of sense. You're improving the position of your queen with a tempo. See, that move has energy. It has a threat. It's specific. It's moving forward. That move has energy, so I like it. Um, queen d3. And... Uh, yeah, he played h6. What do you think of that, by the way? At first, at first, I thought it was something I could use to latch on to. Mm -hmm. But like, I looked at it and I tried to like try to see a plan. Like maybe I could, uh, you know, bring my rook, like right. that rook, the uh, rook. What's it called? The rook lift. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't. I think I, I thought it was too far fetched. Right. Yeah. I no. Mean, short term, you're I right. I thought it was better than G6. I no. Thought it was better than G6. I disagree. I disagree. What? I like G6 much better for him, because really? sure, even though um, even though it, it does because... create these holes potentially, but you definitely his holes are very well protected now by the queen, and you don't have a dark square bishop yeah, to that's... take advantage of. And it's simple. G6 restricts your bishop. Your yeah, bishop yeah. is restricted on this diagonal. Plus, potentially, it prepares f5 at the right moment. I that was should thinking be one with... of Black's main plans to prepare f5 and to expand here on the king side. H6, it's too soft. It creates potential. Now your bishop. Uh, now you could one of your plans. You could reorganize if you could change the order of your bishop and queen which takes a couple of moves for example like queen f3 bishop d3 queen e4 queen f5 now he has issues because now he would have to play g6 but now g6 and h6 is already his king side is a little bit loose 
So uh, I'm not a big fan of this move. Eight. So. That's the first thing I considered changing the order, but I thought it was it would take too many moves. Well, uh, like, the way you judge if something takes too many moves, you ask yourself, can Black do something special during that time? If you look here, Black has no play whatsoever here. There's no counterplay for Black. The position is like locked now. He has no pawn breaks. The best thing to look at to see if your uh, if your opponent has play is to see if he has pawn breaks. There are no breaks. A4 is like the only break. It's not going to do anything. He's just going to take, take. Maybe even if he puts a rook on the A file, then like where is it going all by itself? F5 is not going to happen now after H6 ever. It's not even close. There's no other breaks. H5 is ridiculous. Which means, like, where is his play? What is he going to do? His bishop on b7 can't do anything. His major pieces, like, what could he do? He could just move them to random squares. But there's no plan. Which means you have all the time in the world to organize your pieces the way you want to organize them. Right? Makes sense. Uh, so, which is exactly what you did here. Queen e3, good move. Like, it, queen e3 uh, makes a lot of sense. I actually like that move a lot. Because, first of all, it potentially reorganizes the bishop and queen. Plus, the queen yeah. is just on a good square on e3. It looks, yeah. stares at both diagonals here. It could go to a7, potentially. So, it makes a lot of That's sense. One of, yeah. yeah. That's like one of the reasons to do Mm -hmm. And he played rook c5. Again, this move like looks active. It's like some sort of blockade, but it's empty. There's not like really no real purpose of that move. But it's not. The thing is, he has really nothing much better to do anyways. At least not that I could see it. So it's understandable. Let's see what happened next. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a... I, so rook a1, I get your idea. So obviously I get your idea. You want to play a3, right? Yeah. And open up. So and it does make sense. Yeah. It does make sense. There's like but that's if you had nothing better to do. If if like let's say there was nothing better to do, then it's like I would resort to a plan like that. Rook a1 here. If the position if there's no pawn breaks again, but here you still do have a pawn break. He has no pawn breaks, but what's your pawn break? F4. F4, and why not? Why not? F4 makes perfect sense. It creates instant problems for black. Because if he takes, queen takes F4, your perp, the fact that you weakened your king is absolutely irrelevant here. Absolutely. Because your pieces are dominating here on the board. His pieces are totally passive. They're not even close to your king. So F4... If he doesn't take, now you have two options. You could either push, and now like you could create problem. Although like he might play f6 and lock it, uh, so like you maybe not hurry with that. Most likely you're just gonna take fe here and now connect it past pawn, open f file. Like you really really improved your position. Plus weakness on e5 for him. That has energy. That's how strong players play with energy. Rook a1. It's an interesting subtle move. It would be a good move if like there weren't any pawn breaks. If the position is totally locked and you need a plan, you need to improve your position. Sure, this improves your position. But you have things to do. You have other things to do here. F4. Or like the other plan we looked at. Bishop d3, queen e4. That reorganization I like a lot also. And then F4. Like after he plays g6, weakens his king. F4. So, okay. And now, now it's going to be a very interesting moment. After f4, he plays bishop c8. Again, the reason he does that because there's nothing to do for black. I don't see... No, what... okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, but I... Isn't that to go f5? Because I was looking for a purpose. For yeah, that but move. f5 I was is... Uh, yeah, may, yeah, maybe. Actually, actually, yeah. Actually... You're right. That, yeah. that is what he did. You're right. Yeah, f5. That's like the only possible plan for black. And uh, it, it does make some sense. I guess that's why so, he did it. So actually, I'm pretty sure my next move is f4. And 
I think that once I figured out F5, I was like, oh, of course, I have a palm break. So then, because I, I hadn't seen F4 before. Like, I I don't know why. It was just like out of my mm -hmm. mind. Okay, and then, yeah, great, great. This, uh, that, so this is very interesting. I love your thinking. What a, so I was going to criticize the fact that you played F4 here, even though it's the best move. That's the ironic part. Like you turn on the engine and it's going to say F4 is the best move. But combined with Rook A1, it's like yeah. you're all over the place. You're saying that and then suddenly F4, you're all over the place. Again, when you look at games of Grandmasters, one thing you notice is there's a harmony between their moves. There's a harmony. Like uh, Rook A1 and F4, there's no harmony between those moves. They're like no. opposites. But what I do like, that's on the minus side. What I do like is you're thinking flexibly, flexibly. It's like, yeah, a good player is also able to change their plan at any moment. So you had one plan, rook a1, but now he played bishop c8 and you re-evaluated the situation. That's a crucial, crucial skill that you must have to have a good player. Like a, a weak player, okay, he would just be fixated on his plan. Okay, a3 now, that's why I went rook a1. But you saw now, you realized, okay, he plays f5 after a3, and now suddenly he opens things up. And you realize, before I play, he plays f5, why not play f4 myself? Do the great. And you changed your plan. I like that a lot. Even though, like, it's not harmonious with rook a1, but you just, like, didn't happen to see it at that time. So, uh, I like it a lot. So, okay, f4. And... He went rook e8. Okay, it, it makes sense. So if you take, he wants to take with the rook rather than with the pawn, which is much better for him. Yeah, and afterwards, this game got, like, really messy. No, no. You, uh, actually, the next few moves is very logical. No, 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 like, after that. But what's it called? Oh, and the reason he did that is because he can't take with the pawn, because then his rook ends. Um, oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's so why I was, like, you, I, was, I was, I was, like... I was like blundering. <laughs> right, but even if he could, let, let's say he moved that rook now, rook c7, that would be very undesirable for him. He much rather take with the yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah. So rook e8 makes a lot of sense. Now, again, my first instinct was f5, but the problem with f5, he has f6, and now the position is completely locked. So, right. like, and there's, and by the way, if, like, let's just hypothetically say that happened. Now, now, uh, let's say you're rook c1, c1. Yeah, now those kinds of plans are good all of a sudden. Rook a1, a3. So, good. Uh, anyways, what you did here makes sense. Queen d3, it makes sense because you got your queen out of this e file. And now you're potentially, now you want to bring this other rook to e1. Because now your plan changed. Now a3 is already too slow because there's already a fight in the middle of the board. When there's yeah, action in the middle, forget about like moves like a3 flank attacks. Now there's tension already. So he goes right. queen f6. That's where it gets interesting. Now it gets yeah. very interesting. Queen f6. Uh, I was like, is there any like? Remember what you were thinking during the game. I know it's not yeah. easy. Yeah, I know. What you? Well, think here at first. Okay, when he first. Okay, I'm just gonna say like my first in, like instinct. I was like, ooh, because yeah. I just saw like you know the. The pawn, if the pawn moved, then I would be attacking his queen. So then, yeah, you know, exactly. Obviously, I would always, be, I was started looking for stuff. I was like, okay, let me see. Can I do anything to, like, you know, do a tactic or anything? But I didn't. Please don't tell me there's a tactic here. Of course, there is. Not, not concrete, but it's basically queen f6 is basically a losing move. And you're absolutely I'll right with the way you were thinking. Is absolutely right that you were. It's like alarm bells were going off. What I was talking about earlier, right? You just intuitively felt like something's wrong here in Black's position. Your rook is X-raying the queen. The yeah. king, like you, are, like your pieces, White's pieces are very well centralized. Your queen on d3, bishop e4. Black's pieces are kind of all over the place. This rook's on c5. They're scattered on random places, and it's like you just feel that there should be something, and you want to open things up. And let, here, I believe you just made the Lenderman error. You did not look deeply enough. Because if you just look the move ahead, FE, 
he has to take with the queen, right? Yeah. Queen takes. And now simply rook a to e1. And it's 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 deadly. This rook a to e1 is just he, he's in a deadly. Wait, isn't that what I did? No, you did you did rook a to e1 right away. Which is actually a big difference because like that gives him an option to take himself on f4. If you took first and then rook a to e1. Now look look at black's situation. Let's just make those moves on the board. Here, here, and rook a to e1. This is just an awful situation. What's your threat? How does black deal with that? If he moves his queen, you still have bishop h7 and now the rook. King f8. King f8. Now you just move uh, king f8. Um, you move your bishop. Now he would have to, uh, if you move your bishop, he could take an e1, right? Two rooks for a queen. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, king, king f8. Um, mm, I mean, that just looks so bad for black. You know what? Let me turn on the engine for a second. Because I know there, there just should be something, but I don't see something immediately. So yeah, it, the, the engine gives plus one. So it says queen g5. Let, if king f8, let's say king f8. Oh, of course, of course. That, that, that actually transposes to a position from your game. So do you see the simple tactic here? You actually had this exact position in your game. It just transposed. But that's still two rooks. For... No, no, you instant tactic. You have an instant win here. Yeah, rook takes a seven. I know, but how? Uh, yeah, but so uh, first of all, it's it's two rooks, but it's first of all, it's you you get the pawn on f seven. Second of all, it's like. Not only is it two rooks, his king is very vulnerable there. So look, let, like, let's just look at it. It's just an awful position. So here, check. Like, let's say he moves. You take, take. Now his king is in huge danger in the end. So, for example, queen f3, check. You're just mating him here more than likely. For example, if he goes king g8, you have queen f7, king h8, and queen f8. So he has to go king e7. Now you could go queen f7, king d8. If anything, you could take another pawn, and then h6, you're going to win. This is just awful, because uh, like his king is just completely out there. It's a hopeless position. Like, look, let, let's just turn on the engine to confirm. Yeah, plus 3.5. That's what I expected here. So, yeah, what it says, king e7, queen f7, king d8. Ah, queen f8 check, king c7, and then you take on g7 with check. You see that line? Yeah. And then you take on yeah. h6. So you have three pawns, three pawns and a queen, plus his king is in the middle. And it's just completely, it's plus No, because I saw that. I remember seeing them in the game because I just missed all You mis-evaluated, right? Like I didn't, yeah. Like I didn't look. I didn't realize that like it would be his king so much. I guess I just like looked at the material. Like okay, a pawn and queen. Yeah, but it, it's not just material. Even material wise, it's a big advantage for white. It's equal. How it's you're getting three pawns? No, no, I'm saying. Oh, because you didn't realize didn't... that you get the other two pawns. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, right. Okay. So you did see rook takes f7, right? Yeah. Okay, wow. So it it's very interesting because it takes in on the one hand it takes a lot of maturity actually to see a tactic but to to not do it like a lot of weaker players if they see a tactic like that they automatically do it like despite they're not even sure if it works out. But I'm I'm actually surprised that like you uh you didn't i mean to me like it's pretty obvious you see the king is the f7 pawn was like the most important piece that was guarding his king his king is completely out there in that group your bishop is like at all over that king on g6 so i mean 
sometimes you just you need to use some common sense in your evaluation of position you see like come on king is like not only is the material at least equal you're you're just benefiting so much from that whole exchange so uh plus his rooks are totally uncoordinated that's also very important in situations uh where there's a queen uh for two rooks it's very important how the rooks are if the rooks are like on the same line and they're working together here the rooks are totally uncoordinated which means like you might very well like win one of the rooks i mean you're not going to win this rook on c5 because it's protected but it may be this one because they're not protecting each other there's no coordination so it, it's just totally crushing anyways um what uh bishop d3 let, let, uh, let's go on and see what happened in the game you played rook a to e1 and now yeah now it actually transposed to that position he played king f8 you took took and yeah you're saying so you you're saying you saw that move right rook takes f7 yeah yeah wow i don't know like i guess th then we need we need to work on like your evaluations because there's two parts actually there's two parts in tactics in seeing tactics the first part is actually seeing the tactic and calculating correctly the second part is being able to evaluate the position that arises yeah. so those two parts are oh, like equally important and I've been seeing that a couple of times. Remember your game with the two pieces for a rook? Yeah. You actually saw the tactic, but again, you improperly evaluated. Again, to evaluate it, a position, the number one factor is always king, king safety. And right away, if that's the number one factor, you see, look at this. Your bishop is on g6 on the monster square. His king has no protection now. With it, when without his queen, it's going to be very hard for him to protect his queen. And bishop and queen work beautifully together. They're just going to coordinate together on an empty king and just start checking him all over the place and causing havoc. Now it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, and the other, so three main factors when you're evaluating the position. Material, right? material yeah. you're not sacking anything it's equal 10 points to 10 at least even if you didn't see that you could win the other two points then king king you obviously see you're benefiting like crazy and then peace quality in the end and you see the peace quality your bishop is ideally placed there and your queen will be ideally centralized his rooks are totally out there his bishop is ridiculous on c8 so you see that when you look at all those three, you see you benefit like crazy from that tactic. So um, what what did you do instead? You played queen f3. Again, yeah. this move this move is too soft. It's too soft. It lets him defend. It's too soft. He plays rook c7, and now uh, now what? Now what? Now already like. Black's position suddenly is not so bad unless you have a concrete tactic. You know, his queen is like very well placed unless you could take advantage of it specifically. Here, probably if you move the bishop, he's just going to give get uh, two rooks for a queen. And then he's going to double up with his second rook. Now, yeah. now that his rook is on c7, it's a different story already. He has much better coordination. So now already, like, you know, you gave away most of your advantage. So uh, actually, King G2 is not a bad move because here I don't really see what you could do so that's so much better. And King G2, it makes sense. You're like you're avoiding these checks, right? Like Queen D4. Yeah. Plus, in case you do decide to move the bishop, it's not going to come with check. So it's a useful move. Um, so he goes Queen G5. Uh, I guess he wants to like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess he wanted to get out of that e-file situation. It may make, does make sense. But uh, here, yeah, this I don't like at all. Queen e3, 
it's I just don't like that move that that move by the way like a move like Queen e3 I could sense the fear that you're afraid of him when you play a move like that because you see your king in this position is more safe than his king because your pieces are very well centralized his king is on that fate which means he benefits more from this queen trade than you benefit so um let's see uh what you could do here i re there is something for sure like my first instinct would actually just be to move that bishop for example bishop d3 what does he do what does he do with bishop d3 because uh now like you want to just take on e8 and rook uh e uh rookie one queen e2 and create problems i mean it, it creates issues for him bishop d3 is annoying queen e3 creates no issues for him he could take and you like black's completely fine there then just double up rookie seven so um okay but strangely he decided not to trade he played queen e5 and now um yeah now uh queen g3 yeah you're you're insisting on this trade and here why not valentina why not queen b6 did you look at that move queen b6 just looks very very natural no no it was it wasn't my wait what are you talking about before it in this, was in this position like after queen e5 queen b6 here okay did it go queen g3 here yeah okay that's why i didn't see it like i moved this move i made it like instantly i don't know why i guess i just wanted to uh, my, my mentality was wrong i thought i wanted to trade queens honestly i don't know why but i do know so, why because no, no. you were scared clearly yeah you were scared that's the only reason uh same thing no in no your, but uh, instantly after a minute i was like oh i should have done queen v6 and then so i went back and then yeah i mean i could see it i told you like i told you before i could see it in your body language remember I, i'm sitting very far in the open section you're you're like what 100 feet away 200 like it's a long distance and i could still see in your body language that you're scared i could sense the fear from far away and i you know i play poker i'm a a poker player is trained to sense fear poker players they smell blood when they see fear in their opponent okay i'm all in i'm all in you're gonna fold because you're scared you're you don't want to risk your money here so that's why I know like the body language of somebody that's scared and you had that kind of body language I could see it from far away for example let me show you what I mean the way you're making your moves you're doing it very modestly like you there, there's like a freeze and uh and then you press your clock like even like when you're pressing your clock it's like you're still like evaluating that move okay and then you're still staring at the board and you're taking your notation and slowly writing it down it's it's like those kinds of things you're never gonna see julio becerra do that <laughs> by the way by the way i'm not saying to make the moves cocky like usually when a person makes moves like this that also is a sign of lack of confidence like you see 1600s making moves like this banging the pieces now see that's not what i'm saying too when you look at like a magnus carlson there's a smoothness to his moves like the way his hand like well so you could see in the webcam it's like fluid very very fluid like the hand just goes there's one motion and then right down the move everything is smooth those kinds of things like I could I could I'm able to judge players I could not not even know what their rating is like I could see someone for the first time and I could determine he's probably he's definitely like an amateur this player just by the way he makes moves just by the way he's sitting just by his demeanor and it was, sometimes there are exceptions there are some higher rated players that are not confident but I'm gonna be right most of the time same thing applies to other things it's not just in chess in singing an experienced like teacher could see just without hearing your sound just by how you're standing 
just by your like the way your body is standing the way your body language is is that a like a professional a confident singer or not tennis like i'm sure you could make some like quote just by seeing their like how their backhand and forehand looks you could see you know if they're a good player or not so anyways back to the game we digress uh okay queen g3 yeah and right the moves reflect that fear queen g3 like that's that's a fear move clearly the queen e3 queen g3 like trying to trade queens without a good reason uh so okay he plays rook to c to e7 and now you realize here and it's good that you realize that that trading queens would actually be no good here for white because he's just going to take, and now you have big issues with that pin. Yeah. So, yep. like, you finally correctly, like, retreated, but now black is, you know, in business. He... Wait a second, hold on. Am I not... Huh? Wait, no, 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 this can't be right. What? Wait, am I... Aren't I losing a piece here? How? He's leading with the queen. So he can't take the bishop. He's no, he can take my queen and then take queen. But it's your move. And that's why you retreated your queen. You played queen f2. No, no, but I won queen g3 when his queen was there. No, but it? his rook was not on e7 yet. Oh, yes. I was like... Yeah, exactly. So, um, okay, so you went queen f2. Makes sense. Queen g5. Again, queen b6. Well, maybe here... I queen... didn't go queen b6? No. Maybe queen d2 is a bit annoying. I don't know. Is queen d2 annoying? Uh, maybe it is. So I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's winning a pawn there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They so, can block my So now, uh, so what you did actually makes sense. Bishop d3 because he has this big pressure on the e file. Plus your bishop is hanging, so you had to move it. Yeah. So queen b6 was out of the question. Sorry. Uh, and yeah, you, you, like technically, like trading rooks here would benefit white here because black's rooks are suddenly like very yeah. active. Mm -hmm. So now it makes sense, okay? And he plays this move f6. That's I didn't uh, get it. Yeah, I mean, this yeah it looks very suspicious, but I guess I, I'm not, probably yeah I would do what you did yeah just trade the rooks. I really don't see anything better. Because you can't move your queen away. Oh, maybe stuck. maybe he wanted to take. Oh, he can't take my rook right away because then I may, maybe that's why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Plus, maybe he wants to go rook e5 potentially. He's creating right. like that alpha. So maybe that too. Okay. No, no, I mean, yeah, but he can't go rook e5 right away anyway because of the mate thrust. So maybe that's why. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're right. So here. And, uh... Here you play rook e1, which, uh, which is a terrible move. You know oh, why? Great. Well, tell no. me why. Let's go for it. Hmm. First, I guess I blended a piece. Um, uh, wait, say it again? For a second, I thought I blundered a yeah. piece. No, so rook e1, it makes sense from a general point of view. Yeah, his okay, rook don't is tell me, don't tell me. But he has a way to get a nice initiative at the rookie one. Really? Like he could get a solid advantage, which he missed. Is it rookie five? I mean, rookie five is playable, but. Uh, because maybe if it, he fixes his. No, no. Look, simple. He trades rooks, queen takes, okay. and h5. Like, the, I don't know. To me, it looks so natural, but he oh. missed it and you missed it. Like, I, you just see that the queen is on this file of the king. The bishop is aiming at this pawn already. So h5, the pawn is pinned. And how do you protect? Next move, ag. You're in trouble. Oh, yeah. You're in trouble. And that was actually the only time during the game where he could have gotten the advantage. The whole game, like, it was at best equal for him. You were better for most. And you had plenty of opportunities to win. But this was his only... And it's not like totally winning, but like I think the computer gave minus one here for black. But he missed it. He missed it. Like again, I don't know how how like again what I repeat many many times. 
to get on a higher level, you have to see like simple things like this. There's just no other way around it. And again, if let's say this position was in a textbook and you have to find the best move, you would find H5 very fast if you knew. But the key is like being able to recognize, recognize a position where there's a tactic. And a strong player just able to see, like he sees there's a pin here. The bishop is also aiming here. So how do we like tickle that pawn again? H5, simple, or F5, but H5 makes more sense because F5, you could do like a counter pin. So here's, here's a advice for you, practical advice, which like I rarely hear this advice spoken, but it's very important. When you do tactics, when you do chess tempo or anything, make sure to, like, before you do the tactic, look at the position and see why. Ask yourself, why did the tactic occur here? So you want to start, like, getting to the habit of recognizing what a position looks like uh, that has a tactic. Because tactics don't appear out of thin air, usually. Sometimes like there's just something hanging randomly. They usually appear because there's some sort of advantage. There's some sort of domination in peace quality. So the key is when you do tactics, not to just blindly look for the tactics. Then it's also you're going to benefit from that training. Not as much. The key is to be able to recognize these positions. Recognize positions where tactics occur. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Let's go on. Um, so he went uh, queen e5. He missed that tactic. And here, yeah, I don't see anything better here than to just trade queens. Because like, his queen is better than your queen. Simple as that, right? It's centralized. And yeah. yours is like in no man's land. So, okay, take. And yeah, this endgame... Is dead drawn basically. No, what? Okay, wait, wait. Did it's you think you could play for a win? No, no, I thought it was a draw. But then in the end, he showed me this thing. But maybe it was because he messed up later on. Really? We just go on and see how it goes. Yeah, okay. Wait, he showed you this thing that he could have won or you could have no, won? No, I could have won. won. Yeah, because definitely he can't do anything. He doesn't have any breaks. Yeah, yeah, no. But you have this C5 break, right? That's your own. Yeah. Win. That yeah. was, and then I had my. Uh, but I'm skeptical here, here because it's just not enough. His king is there in time. So, let, like, what, what you guys played in the game made a lot of sense. You played king um, g3. I guess, yeah. I mean, king h4, I don't like because it's going nowhere, your king. No, because this happened. I thought that it was going to be a draw. Wait, what was my. I had a plan. Did you want to go g5? No, no. I, I, I can't see. No, 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 no. no. I didn't. I didn't want to. What's it called? I didn't want to um, do anything. I just went there. Like, I knew okay, that yeah, I did. Because I, you saw you had nothing better to do. Anyway. Yeah, like. I mean, why at least not get the king to e4? Not that it I matters know. much. But okay. I know, I know, but I don't know. I, I guess I saw something in the game. I mean, I knew it was a draw either way. All right, yeah. So he went g6. Yeah, bishop e4. Like, I mean, yeah. Like all these moves are normal here. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. G5. There's really not much to do. Um, for either side, technically, black is better positionally because all his pawns are on dark squares and he has the light square bishop and all your pawns are on light squares. So from a general point of view, plus he has a connected past pawns. So if you look at this positionally, generally, you could like come to a conclusion that black is better. But in reality, that's nonsense because chess is a concrete game. And if you look concretely, there's no way for his king to penetrate or yeah. his bishop. So who cares that all the pawns are on light squares? Uh, yeah, I just don't see any plan for either side. I don't know, but continue because something happened. Yes, on the, the pawn end game, right? The pawn end yeah. game. Because here, bishop f5, king c7. And for a second, I did think you had chances in this pawn end game. But you don't. And the computer confirmed that I checked because you're right. just not getting there. The problem is here's the problem it's. Uh, he has a connected pass pawn, which means like if your king ever can't ever get to g6, 
because then he's just going to start pushing his pawn. Mm -hmm. Which means your only possible way to try to win is c5, right? You need to break yeah. those pawns up. But how exactly, like, do you get c5 no, because, without no. his king getting there in time? No, because after I got down to five minutes and I stopped notating. Oh, but you I had yeah. a, But I had a past, connected a past pawn on the king side. Oh, so, like, you just didn't notate that. Yeah, so I would... Yeah. You must have done something silly because I really don't see a way in this position. Okay, king d7. And c5, you didn't play that move, but I just, that move, I just experimented with this move. So c5, it actually loses. This move actually loses if you played it. Oh, because why? Because after you take, he, takes, now he can. After you move. take, now he has this move. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, a4. So that doesn't work. And what else could you do? They're, they're like, no, literally. No, I know. I knew it was a draw. Okay, so I so can't I just picture imagine. even how he messed up. How did you get a pass? Like, what, what did he do? What if he just moves back and forth? King c7, king d7. No, oh, I know. I knew it was a draw. I knew it was a draw if he did that. But but what did he do? Like, what like what like else? He messed he... up on the king said, I can't remember the moves. Oh, ah, okay. So maybe he got his king to c5. I don't even see. like even No, I like didn't a, let him do that. A, even if it's like a 200 rating player. Like like Mr. Rickman playing. I don't see like what you could do in this position to mess it up. Because there's just no other moves for black other than he can't move any pawns. Which means he could just move his king back and forth. And it, like what else is there other than moving his king back and forth? I don't know. I'm really... Unless he played like something ridiculous like h5 and just gave you that pawn for nothing. Or a4. There, there, like, there's really nothing. The only logical explanation is you played c5 at some moment. I did not. Then I, the, he was probably like nonsense what he said, like that you. No, 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 because I remember had connected path bombs on the king side. Yeah, and the how'd side. you get it without playing c5? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all what you're no, saying. No, that now. position doesn't look right. It is right. How could it not look right? Like you, all the moves were right. All the moves in the notation were like correctly written, so it has to be right. Because I, because I remember he said c five, he takes, and then um I had a pawn, yeah, on d six, and then a pawn on g six, and he couldn't get them both. And I was going to put one. I mean, how... Because I remember that he couldn't go to the king side because I had a pass pawn, and if you moved to a bar, I would queen. Okay. I remember All right. I'm 100% sure. Well, I'm going to take a look now at the notation. No, I mean... it, it must have happened afterwards, but I just can't picture how. Yeah, either. but maybe I have some moves here that I just did myself here, but they weren't actually played in the game. So Maybe, maybe. If G6... Ah, so he never played g5. g6 was the last move. Exactly. Maybe that's why. Yeah, okay. but and uh, So, all right. Let, let, let's go back a few moves here. All right. So, let's say, like, this was the position. It definitely got into a pawn end game, right? Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But how did it get into the pawn end game if he didn't play g5? Because right? he played bishop at 5. How? That means you played g5 yourself? I you, must Ah, have. you probably... Ah, he, yeah, now it makes sense. Somewhere... Why in, would I play g5? Because then I lose a pawn. No, I didn't do that. No. Oh, no, because then I take with check. Okay. You take. So, he probably... Did he take or he probably played like h5? No. No, he ah. must have played h5 because you said you had this g pawn. And then at some point... Yeah. He played bishop f5. Aha, uh -huh, that, yes, 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 like, yes. Like yes. this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, That now that looks losing, of course. So h5, and you probably, like, did something, like king g3. Yeah. And here, 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 and he did that because he exactly. wanted... Exactly, yeah, now I pushed h, h4. Okay, so this, how, how do you not win this? I don't understand. I know. This is, like, the easiest win ever. We did, I like, know. to where, like, that, that's just unacceptable not to win this. We did this in Varetsky many times. Disconnected points. Why are we wasting time with Varetsky if you don't see these simple things? He, it's so. It's so. Did you? Were you down to like less than a minute or what? I was down to less than three minutes. 
in less than three in three minutes you definitely should see that these points and were you not able to identify that they're no i knew like, okay it's hard to say like i knew i had this like tongue feeling like i was like i i can't be like not winning here because i knew that i had okay to so like what run. like what's the problem then oh, i don't get it. So did you agree on a draw and you without playing c5 yeah Okay, I'm telling you, like, th that's just, that's unacceptable. So you cannot, you just, like, in nationals, if you want to do well, you cannot just give away half points like that. Like, wh why are we doing Varetsky then? Which things that you do in your sleep. If I showed you this in Varetsky, you would say in one second, literally. Okay, White's winning, uh, C5, here, D6, that's it, easy win. But like when it comes to the game, because of your fear, you don't see simple things like that. That you can't. You just can't give away half points like that. If you want to do well in nationals against 1700, a golden opportunity to win. And it's so obvious. There's nothing to calculate. There's nothing to be scared of. You could calculate this uh, line in a span of seconds. You see C5. He takes D6. He goes King F7. Uh, g6 g6 if he takes on g6 d7 he doesn't take on g6 you play d7 next anyways if he plays king e8 you play g uh, g7 if he comes back you play d7 i mean uh, to me it's mind-boggling how he doesn't how a 1700 does not properly evaluate this pawn end game before going bishop f5 how he how it's not obvious to him that it's dead lost and it's even more mind-boggling that you don't actually like do it that's you know pure unacceptable it's like it's you cannot like if you want to do well if you want to go up in rating you have to you like going back remember i repeat it's not just knowing what to do but it's doing what you know so now it, it has nothing to do with me. Like, I've taught this to you. You know what to do. I know that you know this position inside out. Like, we've done positions much harder than this, where you had to calculate, like, exactly black hat pawns also uh, that were d dangerous. And you had to, like, and you were calculated those lines without any problems. But this is baby stuff, like a 600 rating is supposed to be able to see this c5 is very easy to see so why didn't you do that only fear that's the only explanation because you're like okay it's a 1700 he must have figured it out if he did it wrong wrong this is proof you see how many mistakes 1700s make they make mistakes all the time let me give you an example before when you were 1100 when you were a thousand you were scared of 1500s right when you played a 1500 you were like oh my god right you were very scared yeah. of 50 and you assumed like they know everything they have everything figured out now you're a 1500 yourself and you know how much mistakes you make like you know already how much mistakes you make and how much you miss same thing with other 1500s they miss a ton they make a ton of mistakes same thing with 1700s you saw at this game with Joran in the first round, the simple tactics that he missed. They make tons of mistakes. You know, I'm a 2200. Can you imagine 2250, how much difference there is? That's 700 points. That's another world. You know how many mistakes I make. Like when we analyze, I miss things all the time. Chess is a very, very hard game. Everybody makes a lot of mistakes. So if you're giving people the benefit of the doubt without like thinking on your own, unacceptable especially like maybe if you said you had five seconds on your clock here still five seconds still that's unacceptable five seconds that's more than enough with the lake to see that you play c5 and win this game easily maybe one second and you didn't want to risk and you agreed on draw. but three minutes three minutes give me a break like to like to figure this out you could figure this out in seconds so i don't get that so i don't like what he offered a draw and you what? took it. He offered the draw and you took it. No, I offered In this position. Yeah. Okay, well, there you have it. You know, I, I've, I've made my point. So, I mean, 
you know what to do again it's a matter of doing it and the only thing that will stop you from doing it is fear what fear does is it freezes you fear freezes your mind that it literally does that you could see biologically you could see like what fear does when your body language is it your mind there's a cloud in your mind you just it doesn't work properly i mean i'm saying all this stuff and i was guilty of this to a certain extent in this tournament so i know i know about this against the grandmaster what was the, uh, you know what the evaluation was my position plus, one. plus 15 I was plus 15 against him and I lost oh, and he had one second on his clock and it wasn't even fear I was I was even killed but yeah I was very nervous inside because you know it could have been my first this is GM after all imagine like we're talking 1700 this is a grand master a grand master 2500 feet grandmaster so and yeah, I'm completely winning, but it wasn't a simple plus 50. There's some plus threes that are easier, but here my king is like in the middle and I have to find some exact moves, which now that I look back at it, very, very simple. But, you know, I got nervous. I lost the threat. I, I gave him too much credit. Like when he made a move, I assumed like he must have figured everything out. You see? That's what happens. Never, ever give your opponents benefit, especially at this level. 1700s, it's a joke. That rating is a joke. They make sure they know a lot of things. A 1700 knows a decent amount about openings. They know things. They know a lot, a typical 1700, but they make a ton of mistakes all the time. They miscalculate simple lines. If you know that, now like you see, bishop f5, oh, boom, that's it, I win half a point so like this game super game super super game so many instructive moments would you agree i know it's painful but like it's it's incredibly instructive so like i i think anybody that watches this video it's like an automatic 50 point game if you follow all the advice in this video i guarantee it like you if you're anywhere from like 1400 to 1600 watching this video if you actually like follow all the advices in this video there's no way you can't gain 50 points of strength at least peace all right hope you guys enjoy